Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know when you're going to get lab rats with Sean and Andy. Welcome to Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to be doing a, uh, a little segment on next generation televisions. How to buy LCD. Plasma. <laughs> and projection televisions. There's a lot of choices out there. We're going to take you through all of the major ones and uh, help you see the pros and cons of each. That's right. It's sort of part of our demystifying uh, series. Not only you know, do we show you how stuff works inside, but also you know, how to make consumer decisions, how to make a purchase decision. We know, and a lot of people today are talking about buying new televisions, new flat panels. So we're here at the uh, digital living room uh, in Toronto, uh, which is where HP shows off their next generation televisions. So let's get started. I'm going to call John Kelly in and we're going to, uh, he's going to show us, he's going to walk us through each of the technologies. He's our TV guru. Let's yeah. get started. There you go. All right. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. So tell us a little bit about LCD. So at LCD televisions, we have one from uh, Hewlett Packard here right now. Uh, what exactly is LCD? Well, this is an LCD flat panel TV. So it's a very thin, very sleek looking uh, TV that can be wall mounted, so it's great aesthetic in the home. But LCD, what this has is thousands of pixels or picture elements mm -hmm. containing a liquid uh, crystal solution. Right. When you so it's like a little ping pong ball yep. filled with kind of a sloshy, some, a bunch of sloshy <laughs> stuff. That's right. Right. When you apply a voltage to that, right. the liquid crystal twists. It twists. Okay, so the, the particles inside the liquid twist and it blocks light, is that right? Yeah, now there lets light come through right. or blocks light. So right. it's kind of think of an analogy at home wood blinds, turn, right. opening and closing them, letting the light in, All blocking right. the light. That's right. what this does. Add color filters and presto you have... Uh, and you have a pixel. A pixel. Red, green, blue and yeah. suddenly you have high resolution. Full color uh, video. Absolutely. Okay, so if I'm thinking about LCD, if I'm serious about buying an LCD television, LCD television uh, why, uh, what, why do I get excited? What's good about LCD from a television perspective? LCD is a fantastic choice, certainly for wall mounting, but it delivers a great high resolution image, great color. <laughs> is it yeah. other light? Oh yeah, it is. Actually, it is. It's very light. It's amazing. The lightest solution in terms right. of flat panel TVs on the market today. You can get LCDs that weigh less than 30 pounds, but this example here, which is a 37-inch LCD, weighs less than 50. So there's a good, you know, uh, size uh, feature along with LCDs. Right. They have low power consumption compared to some other technologies oh, like right? plasma. Right. Um, in terms of a couple cons, and I, I will say this in terms of cons, manufacturers like HP are really improving LCD technology. Right. So the cons are much more diminished, but traditionally some of the cons with LCD have been a reproduction of blacks right. because there's a constant backlighting source uh, and th those uh, crystals are, are twisting. Right. There's a lot of brightness. Right. Sometimes, and certainly with inferior TVs, it's difficult to reproduce black. Oh, I see. The other key con, if you will, yeah. that has been applicable to LCDs is motion reproduction. Okay. You have to really twist those. Uh, right, it kind of blurs, right? So I'm running across the screen, and on an LCD uh, television, you're actually seeing a ghost behind me as I go, kind of thing, There's on the first generation and second generation LCD exactly. television. That's one of the uh, cons with LCDs motion blur, the ability to handle motion, high speed. But, now, but I notice that we're seeing you know, very high speed uh, you know, uh, content here right now, and we're not seeing the blur so much. So I gather that the new generation is not so bad. Indeed. So if you look at previous generations, uh, this is actually a 12 millisecond response rate, which right. is very good. Next generation, which is 2006 product, down to six milliseconds. So that right. con is significantly diminished. Very good. Okay, well, I'm going to send you over to Sean. He's going to you're going to talk to him about uh, plasma televisions. Of course, of course, that would be the second choice that a okay. consumer could face. Awesome. Because then this one looks really, really nice too. So t tell me a little bit, John, about how plasma works as opposed to LCD. Okay. So the same type of thing. There's thousands of picture elements, red, green, and blue individual elements sandwiched between two plates of glass. Okay. Uh, What's different than LCD in this case is that each pixel has an inert gas, and once that's charged, it produces ultraviolet uh, energy, which uh, basically turns on phosphors in each element, red, green, and blue, producing this very so saturated, bright image. Phosphor is just like an old CRT screen. Right, yep. Okay, so does a plasma uh, suffer burning like an old CRT screen might? That's one of the cons with plasma. Again, greatly diminished with the latest generation of plasmas. 2005 and 2006 is improved upon. Certainly from a first tier vendor standpoint, plasma burn-in is much less of an issue, although it still remains a concern. So really burn-in applies to the first 100 hours of use. So you gotta be careful, you gotta adjust your brightness and contrast to ensure that burn-in doesn't happen. Burn-in occurs when you have a static image on a plasma screen for a long period of time, many, many hours. Think about a stock ticker 
or a little logo if you're if you're uh, you know on the web or, or uh, it's like it's called a bug. It's a bug. bug. Thank yeah. you. So Thank if you. you're always watching the same channel, you might have your little bug right here permanently burned in if that's the only channel you watch. Again, the con is greatly diminished. There's algorithms, there's features built in to reduce burn-in risk. So it is a con, but greatly reduced with, the, with new generation plasma panels. So what are the pros of plasma over LCD? Pros, fantastic saturated image. This technology comes close to CRT in terms of color saturation. You really get a pop or a real wow factor with regard to plasma. Yeah. Not sure if it's hitting the other end of the, uh, the screen there, but it definitely is much more vibrant. The other benefit with plasma, like with LCD, is wall mountable. So when consumers are looking at HD TVs, the home aesthetic is important. Being able to mount TVs to a wall, reduce the clutter, reduce the space uh, given to a TV is a great benefit. Now, one of the uh, problems uh, with early plasma was power consumption. I understand that's not necessarily as big an issue with the newest generation anymore. Same thing, power consumption and heat. Uh, plasma does run a little hotter, does consume more energy than an LCD, for example, but it's much more, it's not a concern, let's put it that way, and it's uh, reduced versus initial generations of plasma TVs. One of the uh, studies I just uh, heard recently from, uh, from another company said that uh, there was always the assumption that plasma used a lot more energy than LCD just because of the way it did it, but when you actually look at the way these things are actually working, because these ones right here, when you're seeing black here, there's no power going through those pixels. Whereas on a LCD screen, like I said, because it's putting up a block in front of it, it's actually still running the power of the backlight on there. So it, when it comes down to it, it's a little bit to, you know, plasma still uses a little bit more, but it's more even up than you'd think. Anyways, so we've gotten two out of the way. Let's go into DLP and we'll bring you back over to Andy Walker, who's Great. just just completely lost in this <laughs> picture here. Oh my God. So this is a DLP television, correct? Indeed, this is an HP DLP 1080p high definition television. So, what, so this is a category of television that's sort of been around for a while as far as you know, projection televisions. Correct. So tell us about what is exactly is a proje projection television? So rear projection, um, light coming from a, a rear source, if you will. And there's right. a variety of different technologies on the marketplace. The old rear projection are CRT tubes. So they're basically almost gone from the marketplace today. Right. They're Those are the ones that you saw in the bar, the bar, right? You go into a big sports bar and you see these like flashing red, green lights. Exactly. That was CRT projection. Some of the cons with those products, very narrow viewing angle, right. okay? which you don't get with flat panels. You're almost at a 180 degree viewing angle with flat panels. Right. And with the newer rear projections, you get the same kind of viewing angle. So right. fantastic. The older products have suffered from that. Right. The new products, which are really called micro display TVs, yeah. two types, transmissive yeah. and reflective. Okay. Transmissive LCD rear projection. Right. Uh, reflective DLP as well as LCOS or liquid crystal on silicon. Okay. So, you know, we can get into the details of, of both, but what they both provide is great resolution, great color, great right. brightness. Right in a very large screen very size. Very large screen size. So you're getting like screen sizes up to what, above 60, above 60, 60 inches, things like that. This is a 65 inch rear right. projection DLP product. So massive HD TV experience, very immersive. Right, now HP, you, you, uh, you work for HP. So HP doesn't make LCOS and it doesn't make uh, CRT projection, does it? No, DLP you, product. You guys are focusing, so tell us a little bit about DLP because that's my fa personally my favorite projection television technology right now in the marketplace. What exactly does DLP mean? DLP, digital light processing. So how a DLP TV works is that light, a very bright bulb, is shone through a color wheel that is spinning right. onto what is called a digital micro mirror device. Okay. It's basically a chip with, if you looked under an electron microscope, it would show millions of tiny mirrors. Those mirrors can be shifted uh, in micron or microseconds. Right. So they're shifting uh, thousands so of times per second. What that does is shift the light. Okay, so it's either pointing towards the light source and reflecting white exactly. or away reflecting black, I guess. That's correct. So then how do you get the different, the grayscale? <laughs> well, the color wheel provides the colors, yeah. okay? And the reflection back out through the, uh, the color filters, etc., delivers this HD experience. Right, I okay? see. So it's, it's the whole on-off feature is really how you can get this resolution. The right. ability to, particularly with HP technology, using wobulation, which is the ability to shift those mirrors very rapidly, you can get to 1080p resolution. All right, so bottom line, we, we talked about LCD, we talked about plasma, we talked about project, projection television. So bang for the buck, if you were gonna go out, if you didn't work for HP, which one would you buy, like for, bang, for, bang for your buck today? If I'm looking for the largest screen yeah. size, the best, most immersive experience, rear projection where you get the best value. Price per square inch is the lowest on rear projection. For example, with a 42 inch rear projection, in US dollars, you can pick up a uh, great TV, HD TV, for less than 2,000. 
Is okay. that right? Why? And it will range up to under three thousand dollars for a sixty-inch rear projection. Unbelievable. Yeah. So Unbelievable. fantastic. If you looked and compared against plasma and LCD, uh, plasma, if you're looking at 42 inch and above, it's really where plasma plays in the marketplace. You're looking at 3000 to above $5,000 US for a uh, HD plasma TV. Right. LCD is because they play in kind of smaller screen sizes, going from 27 inch up to 37. Again, down close to $1,000, up to approximately 3000 for LCD TV. So a wide range of price points, depending on the screen size and the experience you're looking for. Right. One other thing to keep in mind, not only is the, the image important, the connections when you're looking at an HDTV is important. So right. check out the connections. Uh, Future-proof your purchase as much as possible. You want to maximize the type of connections, digital connections, component video, right. et cetera. And we're, uh, we actually we'll refer you to, uh, we did an episode on that, didn't we, Sean? Uh, if you check on the labrats.tv site, we talked about high-definition television connectors. Yeah, episode two, I believe. Episode two. So check out episode two. Um, I guess that's pretty much all we have time for. Uh, you wanted to add one more thing? Oh, I actually want to find out. If money's no object, which one are you going to go for? <laughs> My personal favorite is plasma because of the color saturation, the contrast ratio, ability to reproduce great blacks and, and bright uh, whites. Closest to that CRT experience. And how big are you going to go? Are you going to get the 100-inch model? <laughs> well, vendors have announced 100-inch uh, uh, models, but I'd love to have a 42-inch. I'm a simple guy. 42-inch is good enough for me. Right. It's, it's enough for most trades, I think. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Sean. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank thanks you. for the, Thank the expertise. That's it for Lab Rats TV uh, this week. Um, a couple of business notes, I guess, as usual. We always like to see uh, feedback from you guys, so send a feedback at feedback uh, at labrats.tv. Yeah, don't forget to go to the forums, of course, labrats.tv slash forums. Right. And, uh, of course, we have, we have, what, 17 or 18 episodes now. So if you haven't seen previous episodes, please go to labrats.tv and download all the back episodes because we have loads of stuff there, computers, televisions, all kinds of things. Yes, indeed. For uh, Lab Rats, I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And that's it for this week. We'll see you next time. Are you